Good morning and welcome to Crimes with Cole. So how are you doing today? How have you been? How is the weekend? I hope you guys are all doing great. So in today's case, we will be talking about the beautiful blue eyed blonde named Susan Wright who had stabbed her husband so much, she became known as the Blue-Eyed Butcher. Susan Lucille Wright, originally born Susan Weich, was born on April 24, 1976 in Houston, Texas. She grew up with her mother, who was said to be an immaculate homemaker, constantly making meals from scratch, keeping the home tidy and catering to her husband, Susan's father, who was a mechanical engineer. Now, Susan had an older sister and brother, and she was said to be, you know, a C average student in school. And while she came off as a very timid and shy girl, Susan was very willing to please the few boyfriends that she had throughout school. Now, Susan and her siblings were exposed to her father who had a short temper, taking his anger and frustration out on their mother. She thought it was normal that in every household, the family dynamic consisted of the wife or mother trying to please the hot-headed husband or father. It came with the territory. When Susan was a 19, At the recommendation of her then boyfriend, she became a topless dancer. A few short months later, Susan decided that this type of work was not for her and she became a waitress at the club for a few more months before quitting. While on a girl's trip to Galveston in 1977, the 21 year old Susan had met 29-year-old Jeffrey Wright. And Jeffrey was a carpet and flooring salesman. And while he had previously had a problem with substances, many of his friends saw the change that marriage and family life had later brought for him. Shortly after Susan and Jeffrey got together, Susan became pregnant. And in 1998, while she was eight and a half months pregnant, the two decided to wed. They had a little boy named Bradley and a couple years later ended up having a little girl naming her Kaylee. Susan said a month after the two married that Jeff became a monster. Her life went from a fairy tale story to the pits of hell. He was constantly name calling her, belittling her, smacking, hitting, punching, and even kicking her. She was permitted to leave the house for one and a half hours a day. Imagine going to the grocery store with a toddler, getting all of your shopping done in an hour and a half. And when Susan wanted to attend nursing school, Later on in life, after she had both of her children, she wanted to attend nursing school at a local community college. Jeffrey refused. He made it very clear to Susan what her role was as a wife and mother. Even though all of Susan's family and close friends knew Jeff was putting his hands on her, she was always quick to come up with some excuse as to why she had bruises down her back, why she had a black eye or a swollen lip. She never went to the doctors or police because she simply did not want to make Jeffrey angry. She was embarrassed that her behaviors led to Jeffrey becoming so violent and she just simply would cover up the abuse. There was one time that Susan had the courage to leave Jeffrey. She planned it all out with her sister. And as soon as Jeffrey had left for work, 
Susan rushed to gather her and Bradley's belongings, threw everything that ne- that they needed in a bag, and waited for her sister to come pick them up. Her sister had arrived, and they loaded everything up in the car, and they went back to her sister's house. When Jeffrey came home from work that night, he called Susan up and told her, there would be a moving truck at your sister's house tomorrow morning. If you are not back here with my son, I will kill you. And in fear of Jeffrey's threat, Susan loaded up her belongings and her and Bradley went back home. The abuse got worse. Jeffrey was now openly seeing other women and no longer hiding it from Susan. He was smoking every day and using other substances that he had previously had an issue with early on in life. And life just got so much more miserable for Susan. She had finally reached her breaking point. On the evening of January 13th, 2003, Jeffrey had came home from boxing lessons high on substances and he wanted to box around with little Bradley who was only five years old at this time and while Bradley had no interest in boxing around with his dad Jeffrey had punched Bradley in the nose causing him to have a nosebleed now Susan rushed over to her baby's defense sending him to his room comforting him telling him Mommy will be there in a minute. Just go on upstairs. And telling Jeffrey that he had an issue and he needed to get help. He needed to learn to control his anger. Just because his son did not have interest in boxing with him doesn't give him the right to do what he did. Jeffrey attacked Susan due to her comment and then ordered her to the bedroom where he would later force himself upon her like he had done many times before, except this time when he was done. He left the bedroom shortly after, returning with a knife in his hand, swinging it around, yelling, die, be die. He walked over to the bed where Susan was, climbing on top of her, repeating those words over and over again, waving the knife around carelessly in the air. Susan felt an overwhelming amount of fear and knew at that moment, that night, Jeffrey was gonna take her life if she didn't fight for it. So she threw her hands up and she pushed 220 pound Jeffrey off, allowing her to kick him, loosening his grip on the knife. And then she was able to knock the knife out of his hand. And once she grabbed a hold of that knife, she started stabbing Jeffrey over and over and over again because she knew, she knew if she stopped that he would kill her. Little Bradley had knocked on the bedroom door. Susan stopped, but before she got up and answered the door, she had grabbed neckties and tied Jeffrey's wrist to the headboard. And she used her her bathrobe sash and tied his ankles to the bottom post of the bed. She wrapped herself up in her robe and she slid out of the bedroom, closing the door behind her, to go put Bradley back in bed. But she remembered she left the knife laying next to Jeffrey on the nightstand. So she went down to the kitchen and grabbed another knife because she feared that Jeffrey had the other knife that was on the nightstand and was waiting to attack her when she went back into the bedroom. Susan ended up stabbing Jeffrey 193 times all over his body, his arms, his chest, his neck, his stomach, his groin area, his thighs, all from the pain that he had inflicted on her in those five years of marriage. Susan then cut the ties that were holding Jeffrey to the bed. She had brought up a dolly to the bedroom to transport 
Jeffrey's body to the backyard. She went to roll Jeffrey's body off of the bed and his shoulder had hit the nightstand where there was a red candle that was lit. And when Jeffrey's shoulder hit that nightstand, it knocked the candle and the wax has spilled all over Jeffrey's chest. Susan pulled Jeffrey's body on the dolly to the backyard to a previously dug hole. The family was planning to put a fountain in their backyard months prior to this incident happening. So she had dumped his body in there. That next morning, she had packed up the two kids and took them to her sister's house. It didn't quite hit Susan what had happened yet because when she returned home, she started bleaching and scrubbing the bedroom that had blood splattered everywhere. The floor, the bed, the walls, the ceiling, the fan, everything. It took five days before Susan realized that something bad had happened to Jeffrey. She rung the family attorney and had told him what happened. He told the police that he believes there is a body at the right residence in the backyard. And when the police arrived, Jeffrey's body was partially dug up due to the family's dog digging at him for the past few days. And by this time, Susan was being observed by a psychiatrist due to her mental state and belief that Jeffrey was truly still alive and coming to find her. Now, during the trial, the prosecutor had it out for Susan. She believed that Susan was not a battered wife, but rather a manipulative, money-hungry woman. She just wanted Jeffrey's $200,000 life insurance money. And she tried to convince the jury that Susan planned to have a sexy night with Jeffrey and turned what should have been a good time into a torture chamber. The prosecutor went as far as bringing in the blood stained bed and knife tie up one of her team members on this bed, climbing on top of them to really show the jury what Susan had done that night. She did not want the jury to have pity on Susan. And after five hours of deliberating, the jury decided that Susan was guilty a first degree murder and was sentenced to 25 years to life. The entire town now believed Susan Wright was a monster and Jeffrey fell victim to her. Everyone except Brian Weiss, who decided to take on Susan's case and appeal it. And in November of 2004, appeals were made and Brian argued that the prosecutor reenacted the scene that night for TV publicity purposes. That Hollywood had reached out to her specifically and asked about making a TV series deal. Brian said Susan's trial was unfair, that her attorneys did not even try to question anyone to defend Susan's story of a battered wife that no experts in battered wife syndrome came on to testify. The psychiatrist that was the first to speak to Susan about the entire situation wasn't even asked to come testify. When they made it very clear, she truly had a mental breakdown and she honestly believed that Jeffrey was still alive looking for her five days after she had killed him. The second trial started, and while Brian made it very clear that Susan was in fact abused by Jeffrey, there was no hardcore evidence to present it. It was all assumptions from family members and friends. Because remember, every time Susan had a black eye, a swollen lip, a cut, a scratch, her back was all bruised, she always came up with an excuse onto why she was injured. 
Brian did, however, get in contact with Jeffrey's ex fiance and he discovered the stories were very similar and it started out great. And then Jeffrey became controlling, locking the fiance in their apartment one weekend. But when she broke out, she left town and never came back. It was later discovered during the second trial that the reason the prosecutor had it out for Susan so bad because she herself had watched her mother get beat on by her stepfather growing up. And she believed that Susan wasn't showing the signs of someone who had been through that sort of trauma. Susan was diagnosed with PTSD during her second trial and ended up getting sentenced to 25 years in prison. She served 16 of those 25 and was said to be quite the homemaker in prison. She would make little cakes and crafts for the other inmates and she attended church regularly and always hoped that she was going to see her kids again. Now her kids ended up living with Jeffrey's brother and they had no contact with their mother over those 16 years. And you have to remember that little Bradley was five and Kaylee was a few years younger. So she was about three and for 16 years, they had no contact with their mother, which is sad because I don't believe that Susan was an evil person. I think she did an evil thing and was trying to protect herself and her babies, but I don't think that she could truly stand the torture and torment any longer. I truly believe that she had just simply snapped. Her babies will never get to know the entire story until they are adults and the seeds already been implanted at that point. Once she was released from prison after those 16 years she was put on supervision for a year i i mean they physically officers were physically watching her for a year she was on like house arrest with a monitor but on top of that they were physically watching her because they felt like her crime was so horrendous. And then on top of that, she was on probation and she had to attend anger management courses regularly. It, it was a lot. And now Susan is just trying to get her life back. Although I don't think that she's ever going to have a normal life. I think that she's going to be dealing with deeply rooted problems for the rest of her life. And I hope that she gets the help she needs. And I hope that her kids can come around and they can get all sides of the story and then they can make a decision for themselves on whether or not they want to have a relationship with their mother. But that is all I have for today. What do you guys think? Do you think that Susan is truly an evil person or do you think that she just did an evil thing because she was pushed to her limits and she simply snapped you'll have to let me know what you think but until next time please remember to be safe and i will see you then bye